ironically, it is those who accuse people of bigotry that are the ones that are the most intolerant. Hello everyone, you're welcome once again to my channel and for those who have been with me, I'm so sorry I've been Oh, I've been MIA for a while and all that, but I'm back again. And so, you're welcome. And for those who are seeing this for the first time, I also say thank you for clicking this video. It's quite interesting that this will be the first video that you'll be watching or you'll be seeing. I also implore that you click on the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so that you don't miss out from subsequent videos if you find value in this channel. And so, to the business of the day, I know there's a particular word that is used loosely and whether it is, it is applicable or not, people, it flies everywhere and they use it in derogatory terms and in fact, it is derogatory by definition as many have defined it or see it and that is the word by God. So, a religious by God. And that's the focus because that's where, that's our scope for this channel, relationships and faith. And so talking about faith, we see when people express their opinions on particular issues and they are convinced about it, and probably it seems as if they're not um, they're not accommodating different opinions. And when I say accommodating, not necessarily that they are shushing people, but that they are not agreeing or they are not coming to believe or accept. The differing opinion that word is used you are such a bigot that's such a bigot now what does it mean to be a bigot i've seen so many times and it happens in human and in mankind where we define something we want to sacrifice we would give something a bad name so that we can sacrifice it and it's not new to our modern world it happened even in the account of scripture where there had to be a law that would be made to catch a particular individual. And who is that person? Daniel. Daniel was worshipping and was doing his thing and all that. And so they, they found no way to get him and his enemies and whatever. They, they didn't find a way to get him and they needed to create something that would make him um, liable to punishment. And so they developed something and they told the king, oh, let, let everyone bow down to you and anyone who does not bow down and all that and worship the king or whatever, that the person would be accused of breaking the law. That's not new. And it happens lots of times today. So you would probably, there's something that has a base meaning, but for us to be able to apply it freely to people that we have issues with, we refine it, refine the definition, refine it over and over again, and bam! We now say, this person is this, according to this definition. And so that particular word takes a totally different or a significantly different or a broader meaning than it really is. What does it mean to be a bigot? A bigot is one who is narrow-mindedly devoted to their own ideas and groups. Not just that, they are also intolerant of people with differing ideas. So there are two things here. You are narrowly mindedly devoted to your ideas, to your convictions. And not just that, you are intolerant towards others. And I ask, who really, someone who has a mind of his own, someone who has convictions, who really, who really cannot fit into this definition, particularly the first part of the definition, which says that one who is narrow-mindedly devoted to their ideas. Oh, yes. When it comes to the world, ideas, ideas are only as useful as it satisfies the interests of people. Convictions are only useful as it satisfies the ambition of people. And so there is flexibility when it comes to that, and that's no surprise. But you see that at the foundation of Christianity is narrow-mindedness. And so if you have to define bigotry like this, you see that one way or the other a Christian will fit into it. Or probably, let me not just say, 
what does the Bible say about um, Christianity? First, Christianity claims and professes that there is only one way to salvation, and that is through Jesus Christ. That is already narrow-minded. Now, if I now preach it or say it that there's only one way, I don't, I didn't cause injury to you in terms of physical injury, or I didn't say you must believe, or like in terms of choking you, but I just simply said there's only one way. Right now, that makes me a bigot. But at the very foundation of Christianity is that we are narrow-minded, except we are not committed. Now, what does Matthew 7 from verse 13 to 14 say? It says, enter by the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction. And those who enter it or enter by it are many. That's the broad way. Now, for the gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life. And those who find it are few. At the foundation of Christianity is narrow-mindedness. Now, what does this mean and what does this not mean? It means that for the Christian, the Christian understands the power of ideology. And so the Christian is devoted to his beliefs about salvation, sin, and life. And so, it is a disservice to his profession as a Christian if he accepts any other convictions outside of what Christianity professes. Now, if he does that, or if he stays with his convictions, and bigotry is defined by someone who is close-minded in that sense, yes, he's a bigot, and I am gladly and happily a bigot. But this is another, but, but if they stretched it to another level, what's the level? It says, not just narrowly mindedly um, devoted to their own ideas, but also intolerant of people of differing ideas, races, genders, religion, and religions, politics, and so on. Now that's an issue. What does it mean to be intolerant? And let's look at it in the, by definition. What does it mean? An intolerant person is someone who is unable to, or the person is unable or is indisposed to tolerate, endure, or bear. And I ask this question for those who run around talking about people not tolerating or not enduring. If there's a set of people who have endured the most, it's Christians throughout history. Now, I'm not talking about exceptional cases. I'm saying when you look at the totality of Christian history, you are the ones who have been persecuted, oppressed, suppressed, killed for their beliefs, and we don't go ahead to kill others apart from particular areas where those who are not living according to what Scripture says, where Scripture says, love your enemies, do good to those who do bad to you, and all those kind of things. Christians, how are they intolerant by definition? Because they are indisposed to tolerate, endure, or bear. For example, if I believe that someone is sinning or someone is in sin as a result of their sexual orientation, I am not shooting them. I am not killing them. I am not saying, hello, you, I cannot talk to you because you are homosexual in your sexual orientation. I am not also saying that though there are some people or maybe many people who profess Christianity that do that. That's not what I'm saying. There are people like that. But we need to be very clear. We should, must be very specific as to the right application of what it means to be a bigot. A bigot who is uh, someone who is, let me give you a scenario. Someone who, is, who has his beliefs but knows that people have different other beliefs. And so he's ready to engage and talk and all that and say, okay, let's agree to disagree, but this is still my conviction. He's already turned a bigot. Why? Because the person has not accepted. So you have stretched it beyond bigotry or you have stretched it beyond um, the definition that said, if you don't accept me, in the sense that, for example, I, as a pastor, I cannot wait to males. 
according to my convictions. Now, I am not killing you if you are doing it somewhere else. I am not strangling you and saying that you should go to hell, even if we know that all who are sinners will go to hell and be defined according to scripture. In fact, even if I tell you that you are a sinner, if it doesn't really matter, it shouldn't get to you. Because if there is no God or if there's a God and there is nothing, there's no... I mean, if we, if we don't have the same understanding of what sin or morality is, and I say you are a sinner according to scripture, it shouldn't get to you. But if I am going after you, I'm saying kill all the homosexuals. Don't have anything to do with them in terms of as human beings, in terms of the kind of common things that happen to those who come from different backgrounds and all that. Oh, yes, I agree. That is a stretch. That is bigotry. But when it comes to someone, I have my beliefs. And I'm not killing you because of your beliefs. I'm not forcing you to believe what I believe. I am fine. But ironically, it is those who accuse people of bigotry that are the ones that are the most intolerant. That are the ones who are the, are, are the most... Um, um, militant about trying to enforce and force people to give in to their own beliefs and ideas. And that is quite hypocritical. Or that is quite it's a double standard. So if I have to leave it there and say, what does it mean to be a bigot? If it means I have my beliefs and I don't um, entertain, or let me say, I don't believe what you believe. But I can engage. In fact, my desire is that I am able to I am able to persuade you to believe what I believe. I think that's a word I'm not infringing on your rights. But if it is that you have to persecute me because I believe something strongly and I don't believe yours, then that means you are just presenting me to be slaughtered, and that's the real issue. So you know, as a Christian, these things, these guys will not budge. And so you have to define something that will make them evil. And so that's why we are seeing what we are seeing today. But the truth be told, if there is anything, Christianity is also ideological. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 5 says something. From verse 4 it says, For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. Now listen. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ. Now, let me pause there or let me stop there. It says that we destroy arguments. How do we destroy it? Not by physical violence, but by engaging, by speaking, by um, having conversations to let people know that their ideology is negating the standard of knowledge, which is the knowledge of God. We are saying that we hold everyone accountable to the knowledge. How do we do it? Not by holding them in their necks, but by presenting the knowledge of God to them. To say that this is what God says. The one who created you according to his word, this is what he says. And we are simply doing what scripture says. We are not holding knives to kill you. Now, I'm not saying there are people who are not um, violent about it or those who say they are Christian, but they are truly not Christian because to be a Christian is to what? To be winsome, to be loving, to be truthful, to, be, to speak with grace, to be patient, and to bear the fruit of the Spirit without compromising the truth. So if there are people who do that and they call themselves Christians, they don't represent Christianity. It's just, just the point I am making. And we have those within the Christian fold who also know who are also fond of calling one another bigots. What does it mean to be bigots? Someone is open and ready to engage. Someone is ready that let us get to the truth. Our loyalty is to truth and to no one else. And you, because you feel that the person is not just accepting what you are saying, because you feel you are saying the truth, rather than looking to scripture and seeing how and where the person is coming from, where the person does the same, so that we can come to the knowledge of the truth. Then we see even amongst professing Christians, they call bigots, and you, you block each other or you avoid each other. And I'm like, what are we talking about in Christianity? What are you saying? Do you know what it means to be a bigot? 
A billion to someone who does not even entertain. And is what I mean, entertain, even listen. Because the truth, if I want to get to you, I want to hear you and to be honest about what I am saying, thinking about what you think about or what I'm thinking about what you believe so that I can truly and rightly represent it and I can also agree or disagree after I have listened. So it is. it makes no sense if I am not tolerant of your beliefs or your ideas because I want to hear it. I am not scared of whatever I believe. I am open for it to be scrutinized. And I ask you, are you? Many people, both in the Christian faith, those that profess Christian and outside, they don't want to entertain their conversations. Do you? You don't. Then who is one of the bigots according to your definition? Well, we see people are ready to speak, but you shut them out. Probably it's a father, a father in the Lord or a pastor or a leader that has told you that that's how to live your spiritual lives. But that is negating scripture. Paul engaged people. The Bereans confirmed. And in fact, scripture tells us to test all things. Scripture says we should study to show ourselves approved unto God. A workman that needs not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. He said that we should not despise prophecies. And what does he mean? Preaching. Does, we, should not, we should not despise the declaration of God's word, but rather we should test everything. How do we test if we don't discriminate? And when I mean discriminate, if we don't discern, if we don't distinguish, how can we distinguish between truth and error and truth and almost truth if we don't get to the crust of the matter and study and learn and understand? When they say faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, what does it mean? It means that that hearing is not just about the hearing physically, but there is an understanding that brings about that godly sorrow that leads to repentance and salvation. And so understanding is key. And for us to understand, we must what? Do what scripture says. Study. I'm talking about even Christians. I'm even talking about those who are not yet saved. Study. And many times you see that people hear what we say when we preach the gospel and they don't still come to faith. Why? Because that enlightenment that comes by the Holy Spirit has not been implanted on them, has not been given to them. And so when that happens, for us to continually grow in knowledge, we have to study and engage and subject all that we think we believe to scrutiny. And that's the key. Scrutiny. If it is truth, it will stand the test of time. And truth does not mean if something is working, it is true. I mean, there are lots of people from with different ideas and with different identities. They have the sense of something working for them or they have the reality of something working for them. So, working for you is not equal to truth. Now, when we have to go through all these processes and we want to, we are so concerned about the truth, our loyalty is not to any man of God or any woman of God or any sister or brother. Our loyalty is to truth and our loyalty is to those who are also faithful to truth. That's what it is. And, and this is me speaking to those who are professing Christians. This aspect of, of, of this video. The truth and nothing else. So much that someone who I reveal, someone who I respect, when he negates or when he departs from objective truth of scripture, I am not following him. Say, I follow as you follow Christ. Our leaders should be followed according to how they follow Christ. And they are not mediators. They are also fellow brothers and sisters in the Lord. So am I a bigot? Oh, yes. If it means that I have my beliefs and I don't change in my beliefs, even after lots of testing and scrutiny and so, I still hold on to my beliefs or I hold on to truth. Truth is what informs my beliefs. So if that is that and I am not ready to listen to things that have to do with the fundamentals of what it means to be a Christian, okay, yes, I'm a bigot. But if it means that I'm intolerant to the point that I don't want to listen, that's a lie. That's a misrepresentation of people and you must be very accurate in your application of that term. So am I a religious bigot? I think that answer is left to you. But I think I would rather be called a religious bigot for doing the truthful thing and the rightful thing. I would rather be called a religious bigot just as Christ must have been regarded, either use the word used or not, but seen in that way. I would rather be that than to pander to the ideologies, the very ideologies.
that are supposed to be held accountable and subject to the objective and supernatural and superior knowledge of God. I hope we've come to understand that this term is to be used rightly. And if we have to use it at all, let it be that we understand what we are talking about. And we are not just throwing words up and down. That's why they say, oh, bigots, bigots. Oh, you're just a bigot. You're just a bigot. Oh, all this, I don't have time for bullshit. All these narrow-minded bigots. Oh, if it's narrow-minded, yes, I am actually. I'm not even denying that. Oh, I'm narrow-minded according to. I am subject. My conscience, my beliefs are subject to the word of God. My beliefs are subject to the one who created me. My beliefs are subject to the inerrant, sufficient, authoritative, infallible scripture. Yes, it is. And I am ready for it to be tested. That which is, is able to be tested, I am ready. And that which is supernatural and miraculous, oh, I believe it all acted because of the one who did it and the message he preaches and the evidence that comes from that which was said and that which is being said in scripture. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope I have not rambled too much. And I hope even if it's one thing you've gotten, you've gotten. See you in my next video and have a good day. But please don't forget to subscribe if you have not. I hope you didn't get all caught up in the old discussion. If you have, take time to subscribe. And you can also go through um, previous videos and enjoy and also give feedbacks, ask questions and engage because I'm not running away from engagement, I'm not running away from conversations. So please don't forget to like, comment, share and not just that, watch the video and engage. See ya in my next He's more than just a teacher, he's more than just a preacher He's more than your motivational speaker, let me speak up Went fast like a cheetah, looking for answers like a cheetah He's telling you, who do they say I am? Like Peter, I'm about to give a lecture So turn off your iPhone Judaism says he's a mistake just like a typo Some say he's the angel Michael, some say he's a psycho Islam says we got the wrong Jesus in the Bible Look, John the Baptist wasn't just screaming his voice out To prepare the way for a nice... Little boy scout.